Welcome back to the home lab and I've got a fun little experiment to show you today uh, by means of a demonstration really. What I'm going to show you is a piece of electronics that can produce an absolutely massive range of binary random numbers and I think it looks quite pretty too. It's my Blinken Lights supercomputer. So these things have been all over YouTube recently and um, I got my idea from Big Clive who built one. Uh, what it is, it's an array of LEDs but the LEDs are flashing LEDs and uh, what's slightly unusual about the flashing LEDs is you'll notice that when I first turned it on they all lit up at the same time and then slowly but surely they go out of phase with each other. What this means is the little timer chips inside them, a bit like a sort of 555 timer I suppose, um, flashes the LEDs at not quite the same rate. Um, they're very cheap LEDs, I haven't spent a lot of money on them, so they won't all flash at exactly the same frequency. So after a short period of time they all go out of phase with each other and you get these wonderful varied random patterns and it's that we're going to use to generate very large binary random numbers. So let's have a quick look at the construction and then I'll show you how I use it to generate random numbers. They're really quite easy to build and actually not that expensive at all. I just started off with a piece of uh, Vero type board and uh, this sort of breadboard uh, printed on one side and the holes each have a little dot uh, of copper on them but nothing's connected. So it allows us to solder on the components and then join them in any way we want. Um, you also need a lot of LEDs and I bought a great big bag of these LEDs from um, China and you can see that it's still this full, um, I haven't used them all. Um, and these were blue LEDs and they're a flashing type so um, they've got the flasher unit built in them already. And then just to limit the current, um, a whole load of, um, I use 330 ohm um, resistors and again they're cheap as anything. So what I needed to do was spend a couple of evenings doing very repetitive work putting the LEDs into the board and soldering them on. So I'll show you what that looks like now. So here you can see a close-up of the kind of Vero board that I used with its little copper pads on it and the components I use, so the bag of LEDs and lots and lots of 330 ohm resistors. Um, I might just mention here, uh, you might be wondering why didn't I just use one uh, resistor feeding all of the LEDs. Well if you think about it um, they're not all on all of the time so the current here is constantly changing. Um, so it occurred to me to make sure they were always all the same brightness they always need the same current and therefore the same voltage on them so to do that they each have to be on their own little parallel circuit with their own current limiting um, resistor. Anyway um, I poked them through the board and uh, began to solder on the components so nothing's going to work of course because they're not joined and then the next uh, phase was to bend as many of the wires downwards as I could and put in little joining bits. Um, it's not meant to be a professional job um, but the whole point is that you can just build it on your workbench without having to make a printed circuit board. And then um, the final bit was uh, adding a little switch and I actually put a little inline um, fuse in as well. Uh, but the most important bit was how to power it and thanks to uh, Big Clive again here uh, for that great idea of, um, I mean I think you have to do it safely, but um, collecting those disposable vapes. I mean I don't smoke but um, people have these vapes that they just chuck on the street after one use and inside them um, is a lithium ion rechargeable battery. So um, pulled a few of those out and so on the back of the board is a, a vape battery and I've got a little lithium ion charger that I built um, so I can charge that up and keep this powered up. I'd love to have it solar powered uh, but um, the solar panels that I was working on seem to have to be bigger than the actual device and I quite like using it at night anyway. So uh, finally a quick look at the uh, the front of it and you can see how the uh, LEDs and resistors are laid out and then um, if we turn it over um, you can see the wiring behind. So there we go, 
112 LEDs and resistors to make our little uh, blinking lights supercomputer. Okay, so let's talk very quickly about how we can use this device as a random number generation. And it was one of my colleagues actually at where I work who was talking to me about random number generating uh, devices and how difficult they were to make. So I thought, okay, here we go. Let's see what we can do and let's make one. So we've got our flashing LEDs and what I've done is taken a snapshot. So you could just take a snapshot after it's been running for quite a while and then you can look at the pattern that you've got and one presumes this isn't going to repeat in a very long period of time. And what I thought we'd do to keep it simple is we just look at the top row of LEDs. So if we convert those to a binary number, so I'll just put that on top, what I've done is I've called every LED that's on a one and every LED that's off a zero. So uh, we've got one, one, zero, 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 one, etc. And that is 14 bits. So it's a 14 bit long uh, number. Now, all you need to do is convert that number if you want it in decimal to decimal. So if you convert this 14 bit random number to decimal, you get one two, six, six, eight, 12,668 in decimal. And of course you could use the next line if you wanted to, or you could leave it running for a while and then um, take another snapshot of it. Uh, look at the top row if you wanted a 14 bit number. I mean, obviously you could do a three bit number if you wanted. It's entirely up to you which section you look at, but it will just constantly keep generating random numbers for you. Now, just before I remove this bit of paper so you can see it again, um, I'll come over here. There are uh, 112 LEDs. OK, I nearly said 121 there, but it can't because it's a, it's a grid. So 112 LEDs. And if you take 2 to the power 112, that gives you, well, it's a number that's just so phenomenal, I can't even think about it. 5 times 10 to the 33 different variations that should be possible with this. So I guess that the number you're going to generate if you leave it flashing for a while is definitely going to be random. And I haven't even begun to just peel that off um, to work out what number that would be in binary and then in decimal if I used all 112 LEDs. So there you go. That's how you could use it as a random number generator. So there we go. That's how you would generate random numbers with this system. Now, I'm sure there are mathematicians out there who'd say, well, actually, it's not properly random. And when do you select the time to take the snapshot and the photograph, etc.? cetera? Um, but I think it's a pretty good uh, way of generating random numbers uh, with a really simple device. I'm reminded that there's a video somewhere on YouTube of a computer company um, using lava lamps um, in a big array not dissimilar to this, and they use those to um, produce um, random numbers. Anyway, um, I think it's rather nice. Is it um, form follows function? Is it that way around? But I think this is also quite a pretty device. It's quite beautiful. And I think um, good electronics um, should look good. Um, if you um, don't know about why um, I think Big Clive and others call them supercomputers or Blinken lights, well, um, you need to go and look uh, online at Blinken lights and some of the older computers or even some of the more modern ones, in fact, that have these great panels of flashing lights on them, like something from the movies. And uh, they got sort of nicknamed Blinken lights. I suppose it's some um, trying to be a little bit uh, German there. And um, you can see these on the sides of uh, supercomputers. I'm reminded of the Cray 2 supercomputer. I don't remember if it had lights on it, but there was an example of a piece of electronics that really looked beautiful and also did an incredible job uh, in calculating uh, mathematical formulae incredibly rapidly back in the day. So I do hope you liked uh, my Blink and Light supercomputer. And even if you don't need to generate uh, random numbers, I think it's just a thing of um, beauty regardless. And uh, as an aside, of course, you can make little small ones. Um, my partner teaches modern languages uh, and I made this one uh, for her class. So um, French flag.
there we go and uh, it does exactly the same thing so after a while um, all the LEDs get um, out of phase and you get this wonderful sort of uh, flashing thing and I just um, put it into a photo frame with a couple of AA batteries on the back so she can have that on her desk when she's teaching French. So thank you very much for joining me for this video on my Blink and Light supercomputers and I hope you enjoyed it. Do subscribe and like the video if you want to but of course you don't have to but the one thing I will ask is please come back and join me when I make another video and that'll be very soon.